All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. And for this first example, we're actually gonna be looking at it three times, but each time we're gonna be using a different method of finding the derivative of its inverse. And so the first method that we're gonna be looking at here is using the formula that I have right here. And so what this formula tells us is that if we wanna find the derivative of the inverse function of our function f of x, we will have one divided by the derivative of that original function and then the inverse function plugged into that derivative. And so maybe an easier way to think about this formula is to say that it is equal to one divided by f prime of y, where y represents the inverse function of your original function. And you'll see why that's helpful in a second. But the first thing that we wanna do here in order to use this formula is find the derivative f prime of our original function. And so if we're gonna find the derivative of this function, the cubed root of x minus six, I'm first gonna rewrite that cubed root to just be x minus six to the one third power because the cubed root is the same as the one third power. And so we'll have f of x is equal to x minus six to the one third power. And so now we can take the derivative. So we will have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of this function. And that's going to require using the chain rule because we have a composite function where the inside function is x minus six and the outside function is this quantity to the one third power. And so we'll start by taking the derivative of the outside function. And so we're going to have one third times x minus six to the power of one third minus one, right? We just used the power rule. So we multiply that exponent down and then subtracted one from the exponent. And then we will multiply by the derivative of that inside function, which is just going to be one because the derivative of x or any variable to the first power is just equal to its coefficient, which in this case is one. And the derivative of negative six is zero because negative six is a constant and the derivative of any constant is zero. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to one third times x minus six to the negative two thirds power. And then if we move this quantity with a negative exponent to the denominator so that that exponent is positive, we will have that this is equal to one divided by three times x minus six to the two thirds power where that two thirds is positive. All right, so we have the derivative of our function, but now in our formula over here, we need the derivative of our function evaluated at y or of our inverse function. And so let's plug y into this derivative. And so we're just gonna be changing x here with y. And so if we do that, we will have that f prime of y is equal to one divided by three times y minus six to the two thirds power. All right, and so now that we have f prime of y, we can plug that in to our formula here. We'll have one divided by that function. And so basically we're taking the reciprocal of this fraction right here. So we're gonna be flipping the numerator and the denominator. And so if we do that, we're just gonna have three times this quantity to the two thirds power divided by one. And so what we'll have is that this is equal to three times y minus six to the two thirds power. Right, so since this is one divided by f prime of y, that is just a reciprocal of that function. And so we took our function here and we flipped it to have this. All right, and so now all we need now to finish this derivative of our inverse function is to substitute y with the inverse function. And so what we have to do now is go back to our original function and find the inverse. And so if I clean up my work here, let's rewrite our function here by changing f of x to be y. And so we'll have y is equal to the cubed root of x minus six. And now be careful here, do not plug this function in for y here, right? This is our original function, not the inverse function, right? The y in this equation over here represents the inverse function. Remember, if we go back to our formula here, we have f prime of the inverse function, which I just replaced with y, so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on here because now what we're going to do is find the inverse of this function. And in order to find an inverse, what we're going to do is swap our variables of x and y and then solve for y. So if we swap the variables, we'll have that x is equal to the cubed root of y minus six, right? We changed y to be x and we changed x to be y. And so now if we solve for y, the first thing that we need to do is cube both sides and that will cancel out this cubed root and so we'll have x cubed is equal to y minus six. And then if we solve for y, we will add six to both sides. And so y will be equal to x cubed plus six. And so now what we have here is the inverse function of our original function. And so we can plug this in for y 
in the derivative of our inverse function. And so if we do that, we'll have that it's equal to three times x cubed plus six minus six to the two thirds power. And so now notice that this positive six and this negative six will cancel out. And so we're just gonna have that this is equal to three times x cubed to the two thirds power. And now when you have a quantity to a power that is also to a power, we multiply those powers or we multiply the exponents and three times two thirds, those threes will cancel out and we're just gonna be left with x squared. And so this is equal to three x squared and that is going to be the answer or the derivative of the inverse function of our original function. All right, let's find this derivative again, except this time let's use a different method. All right, so here we have the same function, f of x equals the cube root of x minus six, and our second method to find the derivative of the inverse of this function is to use implicit differentiation. And so what do I mean by that? How are we going to use implicit differentiation? Well, what we're going to do here is first change this function to be y equals, so we're gonna change f of x to be y, so we're gonna have y equals the cube root of x minus six, and then we're going to go into that next step of finding the inverse of this function, but we're not gonna solve for y, we're just gonna take the derivative as is. And so let me show you what I mean. We're going to swap these variables as if we were finding the inverse function, and so we have x equals the cubed root of y minus six, and now we're going to differentiate this function with respect to x. Right, so we're gonna have d dx, or the derivative with respect to x of both sides of this equation, and that's going to require implicit differentiation because we're gonna be taking a derivative of y with respect to x. And so if we go through with this process, we will take the derivative of x with respect to x, and that's just gonna be equal to one, right? The derivative of x to the first power is just equal to the coefficient of that variable, which in this case is just one, right? We have one x and that's gonna be equal to the derivative with respect to x of the cubed root of y minus six. And so remember that this cubed root can be rewritten to be the power of one third. And so when we take a derivative of this, this is a composite function, and so we're gonna to need to use the chain rule, but just remember that we're also going to need to multiply by dy dx at the end because we're taking a derivative of y with respect to x. That's what happens with implicit differentiation. And so if we take the derivative of this function using the chain rule, we'll first take the derivative of the outside function and then we'll take the derivative of the inside function. And so we'll have one third times y minus six, right? We do not change that inside function. And then we'll have the power of one third minus one. And then we will multiply by the derivative of the inside function which is just going to be one, and then a derivative of negative six is zero because the derivative of any constant is zero. And so we are done with the chain rule, but don't forget we need to multiply by dy dx. Okay, and so if we simplify this, we will have that one is equal to one third times y minus six to the power of negative two thirds times dy dx, and then we wanna solve for dy dx, and so we're going to divide both sides by all of this, right? We're gonna divide by one third times y minus six to the negative two thirds power. And so if we do that, we will have that dy dx is equal to one divided by one third times y minus six to the negative two thirds power. But now notice that one divided by one third would be three because one third goes into one three times. And we can move this quantity with a negative exponent to the numerator by making that negative exponent positive. And we will have that dy dx is equal to three times y minus six to the two thirds power. All right, and so now we have found the derivative or dy dx of our inverse function in terms of y, where y is the inverse function. And so all we have to do now is figure out what our inverse function is and plug it in for y in this derivative. And so if we clean up our work here, let's find the inverse of this function. And so we'll start by having that y is equal to the cubed root of x minus six. And then we're going to swap the variables. So we will have x is equal to the cubed root of y minus six. And then we're going to solve for y and that will be our inverse function. And so we already did this for the previous example, but we're gonna do it again here. And we will start by cubing both sides of the equation to cancel out this cubed root. And so we will have x cubed is equal to y minus six. And then to solve for y, we will add six to both sides. 
And so we will have that y is equal to x cubed plus six. And so now we have our inverse function, and now we can replace y in our derivative of the inverse function with that inverse function. And so we will have that dy dx is equal to three times x cubed plus six minus six to the two thirds power, right? We just replaced y with x cubed plus six. And so just like in our previous method, we're gonna have the same answer because this positive six and this negative six will cancel out. And our derivative dy dx will be equal to three times x cubed to the two thirds power, which once again, if we multiply these exponents together, three times two thirds is equal to two. And so our derivative dy dx is equal to three x squared. And so once again, we found that the derivative of our inverse function is three x squared. All right, so now we found the same answer we found earlier with that formula, but instead we used implicit differentiation. And so now let's look at this same example one more time, but with a third method that will still get us the same answer. All right, so here's that same example again. We have the same function, f of x equals the cubed root of x minus six, and we're going to use this third method, which is pretty straightforward. We're just going to find the inverse and take the derivative of it. And so the first thing we're gonna do is rewrite our function here by changing f of x to be y. And so we'll have that y is equal to the cubed root of x minus six. And then we're just gonna find the inverse of this function right away. We're just gonna get right into it and swap these variables. And so we'll have x equals the cubed root of y minus six. And then we'll solve for y. And so we'll start by cubing both sides again. And so we're gonna have x cubed is equal to y minus six and then we will add six to both sides. And so we'll have that y is equal to x cubed plus six. All right, and so we're almost done. There's one more thing to do, and that is just to take the derivative of this inverse function, right? We found the inverse of our original function. Now we just have to take the derivative of it. And so I'll do that up here. We will have that y prime, or you could write dy dx if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use y prime, and that will be equal to the power rule used on x cubed. So we'll multiply the three down, so we'll have three times x to the power of two because we will subtract one from that exponent. And then of course the derivative of six is zero because six is a constant. And so we just found that y prime is equal to three x squared. And that is the derivative of the inverse of our original function. And so now you have seen that all three methods will get us the same answer of three x squared. So when you want to find the derivative of an inverse function, you can pick between these three methods that we went through in this video, and you should get the same answer no matter which method you choose to use. All right, so one more quick example for this video. We wanna find the derivative of the inverse function of f of x equals the cubed root of x minus six at x equals 14. And so this is the same function that we have been working with for this entire video. And so the focus of this question isn't necessarily to find the derivative of it. I'm more interested in showing you what it means to find that derivative at x equals 14. And so we already know what the derivative of the inverse of this function is, right? We found it three different times in this video. And so if you were doing this problem from scratch, you could choose any one of those three methods to use and find the derivative of the inverse. But I'm just gonna write it down in this example. We already found that the derivative of the inverse function is equal to three x squared, right? That is what we found three times in this video. And so what does it mean by find the derivative at x equals 14? Well, when a problem says this, note that this x value corresponds to the original function that you were given, right? And so the first thing that you should do when you are given an x value like this for that original function is plug that value of x into the function to figure out what the corresponding value of y is so that you have a full coordinate point. And so if we plug 14 into this function, we will have f of 14 is equal to the cube root of 14 minus six. Now 14 minus six is equal to eight, so this is equal to the cube root of eight, and we know that the cube root of eight is two because two times two times two is eight, and so this is equal to two. And so we know that the full coordinate point is x equals 14 comma y equals two, right? And so this is the coordinate point on the original function f of x. And so I'm just gonna label that with f of x. 
And so the reason why we did this is because we're not going to be plugging in this value of x into this derivative, right? Even though we want to find the derivative of the inverse function at x equals 14, this value of x corresponds to the original function, and so we cannot plug 14 into this x for this derivative because this derivative is of the inverse function. And so what we need to do is find the equivalent coordinate point for the inverse function. And so this is where your knowledge about inverse functions comes into play because we know that an inverse function has the opposite coordinate points of the original function, right? So if the original function has a coordinate point of 14 comma two, then the inverse function is going to have a coordinate point where those x and y values are reversed meaning that we would have the coordinate point of two comma 14, right? That would be for f inverse of x. And so now that we have the coordinate point for the inverse function, we can plug that value of x into our derivative. And so if we do that, this will be equal to three times two squared, which is equal to three times four, which is equal to 12. And so that is the answer to this problem. Right, so when you have a problem like this where you wanna find the derivative of an inverse function and you want to evaluate it at a particular value of x, make sure that you find that full coordinate point and then reverse it so that you have the coordinate point for the inverse function. And that is what you're going to use to plug into the derivative of that inverse function. All right, and so that's all I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.